Yellow Brick War, Chapter 38 Warily, Nox and I eyed Mombi. Whose side was she on? What about what we just overheard? You're going to tell me you think Glamora is Glinda, she said gruffly. My jaw dropped, but Knox nodded. Mombi sighed. It's more complicated than that. She's still Glamora, but Glinda's a part of her now. I think they're still battling it out in there. Glamora is keeping Glinda in check for now, but who knows how long that will last. When did you guess? Right after the battle. Gert should have known, too, but Glamora is using Gert's ability to read minds to cloud her thinking. The connection runs both ways if you're powerful enough. It wasn't safe to move openly against her. But now, with all this talk of controlling Amy... Mombi shook her head. She's going to do something soon, and we have to be ready to stop her. Glamora might still triumph, but Glinda is incredibly powerful. And if she wins, she can use the quadrant magic that binds us together to control us. Why didn't you tell me? Knox asked. Mombi shot him a sympathetic look. Sorry, Sonny, but it wasn't safe. And no offense, but Gert and I are stronger than you, quadrant or no quadrant. Mombi sighed. The Gnome King is in the other place. Dorothy who knows where. Glinda trying to defeat Glamora and take control of the quadrant. Not good. Not good at all. And if the barriers between Oz and Ev are as meamble, uh, malleable as the barriers between Oz and the other place, we're in trouble. The Gnome King has a whole host of nasty creatures at his disposal. She shook her head. Never a dull moment in Oz, she said. I have to go back to Kansas, I said urgently. I have to help my mom against the Gnome King. Not a chance, Mombi said dispensively. Even if we knew how to send you back, which we don't, you wouldn't last for a second against the Gnome King without magic. He's already shown that his power isn't limited in the other place. He'll crush you like a bug. But the shoes... No buts. First things first. It's time to figure out how to stop Glinda and get Glamora back. Well, well, said a voice from the darkness. We certainly do learn a lot when we eavesdrop, don't we? Glamora stepped out of the shadows. It's not very nice of you to run around behind my back, dear sister, she said. I recognized Glinda's menacing, sickly sweet syrupiness in her voice. Mombi met her gaze steadily. She didn't look too surprised that Glamora had been spying on us. I don't think you'd be stupid enough to try anything before you know. But apparently I was wrong, Mombi said. You know that even as strong as you are, you can't defeat the rest of the Quadrant and Amy combined. Oh, I don't need to be, Glamora said with a smile. I have help. The air beside her began to glow with an all-too-familiar silver light. A twisted metal wand appeared in Glamora's hand, and she held it aloft. More silver light ran down its length like a mercury, like mercury dripping to the ground and spreading outward into a flat pool of molten metal. Get back, Mombi said urgently. She didn't have to tell me twice. The pool's surface shimmered and grew transparent. I could see through it as if it was a window to another world. And it was. Below us was the main hallway of Dwight D. Eisenhower Senior High. I recognized the worn tiles and watery fluorescent lights immediately. A perfect square of less faded linoleum marked where the diorama had once stood. The windows were boarded up where the Gnome King storm had broken the glass, but the rubble had been cleared away. The hall was empty, but daylight filtered in through the few unbroken windows. Class must be in session. Knox grabbed my arm as if to restrain me, and I realized I was leaning toward the pool as though I wanted to jump through it to the other side. You can't, Amy he said urgently. It's not a portal. Not for you, it isn't, Glamora said. But for some of us, it works quite nicely. She smiled and waved her hand. It's time, she said. At first, I had no idea who she was talking to. And then, Assistant Principal Scranchin strode into view in the deserted hallway, and he wasn't alone. He had Madison by the shoulders. Dustin Jr. was held tightly in her arms. Dustin Sr. ran behind them. His mouth was open as if he was shouting something, but I couldn't hear him. "'Get out of there!' I yelled. But it was obvious he couldn't hear me either. Whatever window Glamora had created, it only let us see into Kansas. "'Oh, it's no use,' Glamora said. "'They can't hear you, but he can. And if I were you, I wouldn't upset him. Just because he thinks he can put you to good use doesn't mean he won't punish you if you provoke him his temper.' Your friend is very old. 
and don't tell him I said so, but sometimes he's awfully grumpy. Assistant Principal Scranchin looked up, his eyes meeting mine through Glamour's window, and then he smiled. Silver smoke billowed up from his feet. His body began to ripple and his skin peeled away in long strips that dissolved into silvery ooze. Madison's mouth opened in a silent scream of terror as Assistant Principal Scranchin dissolved, revealing the Gnome King. Now it's time to finish the work the wizard started, Glamora said. Her tone was almost cheerful, but her eyes sparkled with an insane light. I wondered if the struggle between Glenda and Glamora had resulted in something that was a combination of the two. Something more than a little crazy. I thought the wizard wanted to rule Oz, I said. Oh, his vision was limited, make no mistake, Glamora said. But he had the right idea. After all, two worlds are better than one. In exchange for unlimited access to Oz's power, my new friend has offered to help me rule the world, this world. And yours. You can't do that, Mombi growled. She was edging almost impersonally toward Glamora, as if getting cl being closer to the deranged witch would, would somehow make it easier to stop her. At my side, Knox was tense, his eyes flicking back and forth between the two. I can do whatever I want, you old bat, Glamora snapped, in a little girl's petulant tone. I can smash Oz into smithereens if I feel like it, but for now, I'm just going to throw a little welcome party. I hate to overshadow Ozma's big day, but this can wait. This can't wait. She dodged away from Mombi and pointed her wand at the silver pool. The Gnome King reached upward, still keeping his grip to Madison. His body began to stretch and lengthen as he rose to meet Glamora's outstretched arm. It was like watching sand move through an hourglass in reverse. Madison's face was filled with absolute terror as the Gnome King pulled her toward Glamora's window. I watched in horror as the baby slipped from her arms. Knox gasped, and Mombi jerked forward as if she could somehow catch him, but we were too late. The baby tumbled to the ground, and then incredibly Dustin dove for the baby. At the, in that second, I understood exactly what it was that had made him Dwight D. Eisenhower Senior High biggest football star. He moved with almost superhuman speed, reaching for Dustin Jr. as if he was going for the biggest touchdown of his life. He caught the baby seconds before he hit the ground. At the exact same moment, the Gnome King burst out of Glamora's window, sending drops of molten silver flying. I screamed in pain as the hot liquid burned through my dress and seared my arms and legs. Next to me, Knox slapped at his smoking clothes. Glamora giggled in triumph, and Madison Pendleton, still in the Gnome King's bony clutches, was screaming bloody murder. That's quite enough, the Gnome King said curtly, letting go of her long, long enough to slap her. Madison shut up immediately. Her eyes were huge, darting around the clearing, and she gasped in shock when she saw me. She was shaking so hard I thought she would fall over. Now then, the Gnome King said, Miss Gum, I believe you have something that belongs to me. I'd like it back. 